Yashar, Jasher, 54. And when Yahuda saw the dealings of Yosef with them, Yahuda approached him and broke open the door and came with his brethren before Yosef. And Yahuda said unto Yosef, Let it not seem grievous in the sight of my Lord. May your servant, I pray you, speak a word before you. And Yosef said unto him, Speak. And Yahuda spoke before Yosef, and his brethren were there standing before them. And Yahuda said unto Yosef, Surely, when we first came to our Lord to buy food, you did consider us as spies of the land, and we brought Binyamin before you, and you still make sport of us this day. Now therefore, let the king hear my words, and send, I pray you, our brother, that he may go along with us to our father, lest your soul perish this day with all the souls of the inhabitants of Mitzrayim. Do you not know what two of my brethren, Shimon and Levi, did unto the city of Shechem and unto seven cities of the Emorim on account of our sister, Dina, and also what they would do for the sake of their brother, Binyamin, and I with my strength, who am greater and mightier than both of them, come this day upon you and your land, if you are unwilling to send our brother. Have you not heard what our Elohim, who made choice of us, did unto Pharaoh on account of Sarah, our mother, whom he took away from our father, that he smote him and his household with heavy plagues, that even unto this day the Mitzrim relate this wonder to each other, so will our Elohim do unto you on account of Binyamin, whom you have this day taken from his father, and on account of the evils which you this day heap over us in your land. For our Elohim will remember this covenant with our father Avraham and bring evil upon you because you have grieved the soul of our father this day. Now therefore, hear my words that I have this day spoken unto you and send our brother that he may go away lest you and the people of your land die by the sword. For you cannot all prevail over me. And Yosef answered Yahuda, saying, Why have you opened wide your mouth, and why do you boast over us, saying, Strength is with you? As Pharaoh lives, if I command all my valiant men to fight with you, surely you and these your brethren would sink in the mire. And Yahuda said unto Yosef, Surely it becomes you and your people to fear me. As Yahuwah lives, if I once draw my sword, I shall not sheathe it again until I shall this day have slain all Mitzrayim. And I will commence with you and finish with Pharaoh, your master. And Yosef answered and said unto him, Surely strength belongs not alone to you. I <coughs> excuse me. I am stronger and mightier than you. Surely if you draw your sword, I will put it to your neck and the necks of all your brethren. And Yahuda said unto him, Surely if this day open my mouth against you, I would swallow you up, that you be destroyed from off the earth, and perish this day from your kingdom. And Yosef said, Surely, if you open your mouth, I have power and might to close your mouth 
with a stone until you shall not be able to utter a word. See how many stones are before us? Truly, I can take a stone and force it into your mouth and break your jaws And Yahuda said, Elohim is witness between us that we have not hitherto desired to battle with you. Only give us our brother, and we will go from you. And Yosef answered and said, As Pharaoh lives, if all the kings of Canaan came together with you, you should not take him from my hand. Now therefore go your way to your father, and your brother shall be unto me for a slave, for he has robbed the king's house. And Yahuda said, What is it to you or to the character of the king? Surely the king sends forth from his house throughout the land silver and gold, either in gifts or expenses, and you still talk about your cup, which you did place in our brother's bag, and say that he has stolen it from you? Far be it that our brother Binyamin, or any of the seed of Abraham, should do this thing to steal from you, or from anyone else, whether king, prince, or any man. Now therefore, cease this accusation, lest the whole earth hear your words, saying, For a little silver the king of Mitzrayim wrangled with the men, and he accused them and took their brother for a slave. And Yosef answered and said, Take unto you this cup, and go from me, and leave your brother for a slave, for it is the judgment of a thief to be a slave. And Yahuda said, Why are you not ashamed of your words to leave our brother and to take your cup? Surely if you give us your cup, or a thousand times as much. We will not leave our brother for the silver, which is found in the hand of any man, that we will not die over him. And Yosef answered, And why did you forsake your brother, and sell him for twenty pieces of silver unto this day? And why then will you not do the same to this your brother? And Yahuda said, Yahuwah is witness between me and you, that we desire not your battles. Now therefore give us our brother, and we will go from you without quarreling. And Yosef answered and said, If all the kings of the land should assemble, they will not be able to take your brother from my hand. And Yahuda said, What shall we say unto our father when he sees that our brother comes not with us? and will grieve over him. And Yosef answered and said, This is the thing which you shall tell unto your father, saying, The rope has gone after the bucket. And Yahuda said, Surely you are a king, and why speak you these things? Giving a false judgment Woe unto the king who is like unto you. And Yosef answered and said, There is no false judgment in the word that I spoke on account of your brother Yosef. For all of you sold him to the Midianim for twenty pieces of silver, and you all denied it to your father, and said unto him, An evil beast has devoured him. Yosef has been torn to pieces. And Yahuda said, Behold, the fire of shame burns in my heart. Now I will burn all your land with fire. And Yosef answered and said, Surely your sister-in-law Tamar, who killed your sons, extinguished the fire of Shechem. 
And Yahudah said, If I pluck out a single hair from my flesh, I will fill all Mitzrayim with its blood. And Yosef answered and said, Such is your custom to do as you did to your brother whom you sold, and you dipped his coat in blood and brought it to your father, in order that he might say an evil beast devoured him, and here is his blood. And when Yahudah heard this thing, he was exceedingly wroth, and his anger burned within him. And there was before him in that place a stone, the weight of which was about four hundred shekels. And Yahudah's anger was kindled, and he took the stone in one hand and cast it to the heavens and caught it with his left hand. And he placed it afterward under his legs, and he sat upon it with all his strength, and the stone was turned into dust from the force of Yahudah. And Yosef saw the act of Yahudah, and he was very much afraid. But he commanded Manasseh, his son, and he also did with another stone like unto the act of Yahudah. And Yahudah said unto his brethren, Let not any of you say, This man is a Mitzri, but by his doing this thing, he is of our father's family. And Yosef said, Not to you only is strength given, for we are also powerful men, and why will you boast over us all? And Yahudah said unto Yosef, Send, I pray you, your, you, our brother, and ruin not your country this day. And Yosef answered and said unto them, Go and tell your father an evil beast has devoured him, as you said concerning your brother Yosef. And Yahudah spoke to his brother Naphtali, and he said unto him, Make haste, go now and number all the streets of Mitzrayim, and come and tell me. And Shimon said unto him, Let not this thing be a trouble to you. Now I will go to the mount, and take up one large stone from the mount, and level it at everyone in Mitzrayim, and kill all that are in it. And Yosef heard all these words that his brethren spoke before him, and they did not know that Yosef understood them, for they imagined that he knew not to speak Ivrit. And Yosef was greatly afraid at the words of his brethren, lest they should destroy Mitzrayim. And he commanded his son Menahasheh, saying, Go now, make haste, and gather unto me all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim, and all the valiant men together. And let them come to me now upon horseback and on foot and with all sorts of musical instruments. And Menasheh went and did so. And Naphtali went as Yahudah had commanded him. For Naphtali was light-footed as one of the swift stags. And he would go upon the ears of grain. And they would not break under him. And he went and numbered all the streets of Mitzrayim and found them to be twelve. And he came hastily and told Yahudah. And Yahudah said unto his brethren, Hasten you and put on every man his sword upon his loins, and we will come over Mitzrayim and smite them all. And let not a remnant remain. And Yahudah said, Behold, I will destroy three of the streets with my strength, and you shall each destroy one street. And when Yahudah was speaking this thing, behold, the inhabitants of Mitzrayim and all the mighty men came toward them with all sorts of musical instruments and with loud shouting. And their number was five hundred cavalry and ten thousand infantry and four hundred men who could fight 
without sword or spear, only with their hands and strength. And all the mighty men came with great storming and shouting, and they all surrounded the sons of Yaakov and terrified them. And the ground quaked at the sound of their shouting. And when the sons of Yaakov saw these troops, they were greatly afraid of their lives. And Yosef did so in order to terrify the sons of Yaakov to become tranquilized. And Yahuda, seeing some of his brethren terrified, said unto them, Why are you afraid while the grace of Elohim is with us? And when Yahuda saw all the people of Mitzrayim surrounding them at the command of Yosef to terrify them, only Yosef commanded them, saying, Do not touch any of them. Then Yahuda hastened and drew his sword and uttered a loud and bitter scream. And he smote with his sword, and he sprang upon the ground, and he still continued to shout against all the people. And when he did this thing, Yahuwah caused the terror of Yahuda and his brethren to fall upon the valiant men and all the people that surrounded them. And they all fled at the sound of the shouting. And they were terrified and fell one upon the other. And many of them died as they fell. And they all fled from before Yahuda and his brethren and from before Yosef. And while they were fleeing, Yahuda and his brethren pers pursued them unto the house of Pharaoh, and they all escaped. And Yahuda again sat before Yosef and roared at him like a lion and gave a great and tremendous shriek at him. And the shriek was heard at a distance, and all the inhabitants of Chukot heard it, and all Mitzrayim quaked, at the sound of the shriek, and also the walls of Mitzrayim and of the land of Goshen fell in from the shaking of the earth. And Pharaoh also fell from his throne upon the ground, and also all the pregnant women of Mitzrayim and Goshen miscarried when they heard the noise of the shaking for they were terribly afraid. And Pharaoh sent word, saying, What is this thing that has this day happened in the land of Mitzrayim? And they came and told him all the things from beginning to end. And Pharaoh was alarmed, and he wondered, and was greatly afraid. And his fright increased when he heard all these things. And he sent unto Yosef, saying, You have brought unto me the Ivrim to destroy all Mitzrayim. What will you do with that thievish slave? Send him away and let him go with his brethren, and let us not perish through their evil. Even we, you and all Mitzrayim, and if you desire not to do this thing, cast off from you all my valuable things and go with them to their land, if you delight in it. For they will this day destroy my whole country and slay all my people. Even all the women of Mitzrayim have miscarried through their screams. See what they have done merely by their shouting and speaking? Moreover, if they fight with the sword, they will destroy the land. Now therefore choose that which you desire, whether me or the Ivrim, whether Mitzrayim, rather Mitzrayim or the land of the Ivrim. And they came and told Yosef all the words of Pharaoh. 
that he had said concerning him. And Yosef was greatly afraid at the words of Pharaoh. And Yahuda and his brethren were still standing before Yosef, indignant and enraged. And all the sons of Yaakov roared at Yosef like the roaring of the sea and its waves. And Yosef was greatly afraid of his brethren and on account of Pharaoh. And Yosef sought a pretext to make himself known unto his brethren, lest they should destroy all Mitzrayim. And Yosef commanded his son Menashech, and Menashech went and approached Yahuda, and placed his hand upon his shoulder. And the anger of Yahuda was stilled. And Yahuda said unto his brethren, Let no one of you say that this is the act of a Mitzri youth, for this is the work of my father's house. And Yosef, seeing and knowing that Yahudah's anger was stilled, he approached to speak unto Yahudah in the language of mildness. And Yosef said unto Yahudah, Surely you speak truth and have this day verified your assertions concerning your strength. And may your Elohim, who delights in you, Increase your welfare. But tell me truly, why from amongst all your brethren do you wrangle with me on account of the lad, as none of them have spoken one word to me concerning him? And Yahuda answered Yosef, saying, Surely you must know that I was security for the lad to his father saying, If I brought him not unto him, I should bear his blame forever. Therefore have I approached you from amongst all my brethren. For I saw that you were unwilling to suffer him to go from you. Now, therefore, may I find grace in your sight that you shall send him to go with us. And behold, I will remain as a substitute for him to serve you in whatsoever you desire. For wheresoever you shall send me, I will go to serve you with great energy. Send me now to a mighty king who has rebelled against you, and you shall know what I will do unto him and unto his land. Although he may have cavalry and infantry or an exceeding mighty people, I will slay them all and bring the king's head before you. Do you not know or have you not heard that our father Avraham with his servant Eliezer smote all the kings of Elam with their hosts in one night. They left not one remaining. And ever since that day, our father's strength was given unto us for an inheritance, for us and our seed forever. And Yosef answered and said, You speak truth, and falsehood is not in your mouth. For it was also told unto us that the Ivrim have power, and that Yahuwah Elohim delights much in them. And when then can they stand, rather, and who then can stand before them? However, on this condition will I send your brother, if you bring, rather, if you will bring before me his brother, the son of his mother, of whom you said that he had gone from you 
down to Mitzrayim. And it shall come to pass when you bring unto me his brother. I will take him in his stead, because not one of you was security for him to your father. And when he shall come unto me, I will then send with you his brother, for whom you have been security. And Yahudah's anger was kindled against Joseph when he spoke this thing, and his eyes dropped blood with anger. And he said unto his brethren, How does this man this day seek his own destruction, and that of all Mitzrayim? And Shimon answered Joseph, saying, Did we not tell you at first that we knew not the particular spot to which he went? and whether he be dead or alive, and wherefore speaks my Lord like unto these things. And Yosef, observing the countenance of Yahudah, discerned that his anger began to kindle when he spoke unto him, saying, Bring unto me your other brother instead of this brother. And Yosef said unto his brethren, Surely you said that your brother was either dead or lost. Now, if I should call him this day, and he should come before you, would you give him unto me instead of his brother? And Yosef began to speak and call out, Yosef, Yosef, come this day before me, and appear to your brethren, and sit before them. And when Yosef spoke this thing before them, they looked each a different way, to see from whence Yosef would come before them. And Yosef observed all their acts, and said unto them, Why do you look here and there? I am Yosef, whom you sold to Mitzrayim. Now therefore, let it not grieve you that you sold me, for as a support during the famine did Elohim send me before you? And his brethren were terrified at him when they heard the words of Yosef. And Yahudah was exceedingly terrified at him. And when Binyamin heard the words of Yosef, he was before them in the inner part of the house. And Binyamin ran unto Yosef his brother, and embraced him, and fell upon his neck, and they wept. And when Yosef's brethren saw that Benjamin had fallen upon his brother's neck, and wept with him, they also fell upon Yosef, and embraced him. And they wept a great weeping with Yosef. And the voice was heard in the house of Yosef, that they were Yosef's brethren, and it pleased Pharaoh exceedingly, for he was afraid of them, lest they should destroy Mitzrayim. And Pharaoh sent his servants unto Yosef to congratulate him concerning his brethren who had come to him, and all the captains of the armies and troops that were in Mitzrayim came to rejoice with Yosef, and all Mitzrayim rejoiced greatly about Yosef's brethren. And Pharaoh sent his servants to Yosef, saying, Tell your brethren to fetch all belonging to them, and let them come unto me, and I will place them in the best part of the land of Mitzrayim. And they did so. And Yosef commanded him that was set over his house to bring out to his brethren gifts and garments, and he brought out to them many garments being robes of royalty, and many gifts, and Yosef divided them amongst his brethren. And he gave unto each of his brethren a change of garments of gold and silver, and three hundred pieces of silver. And Yosef commanded them all to be dressed in these garments and to be brought before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh, seeing that all Yosef's brethren were valiant men and of beautiful appearance, 
he greatly rejoiced. And they afterward went out from the presence of Pharaoh to go to the land of Canaan, to their father, and their brother Benjamin was with them. And Yosef rose up and gave unto them eleven chariots from Pharaoh, and Yosef gave unto them his chariot, upon which he rode on the day of his being crowned in Mitzrayim, to fetch his father to Mitzrayim. And Yosef sent to all his brothers' children garments according to their numbers, and a hundred pieces of silver to each of them. And he also sent garments to the women of his brethren from the garments of the king's women, and he sent them. And he gave unto each of his brethren ten men to go with them to the land of Canaan to serve them, to serve their children and all belonging to them in coming to Mitzrayim. And Yosef sent by the hand of his brother Binyamin ten suits of garments for his ten sons, a portion above the rest of the children of the sons of Yaakov. And he sent to each fifty pieces of silver and ten chariots on the account of Pharaoh. And he sent to his father ten asses laden with all the luxuries of Mitzrayim and ten she-asses laden with grain and bread and nourishment for his father and to all that were with him as provisions for the road. And he sent to his sister Dinah garments of silver and gold and frankincense and myrrh and aloes and women's ornaments in great plenty. And he sent the same from the women of Pharaoh to the women of Binyamin. And he gave unto all his brethren, also to their women, all sorts of onyx stones and bedelium, and from all the valuable things amongst the great people of Mitzrayim. Nothing of all the costly things was left, rather, Nothing of all the costly things was left but what Yosef sent of to his father's household. And he sent his brethren away, and they went, and he sent his brother Binyamin with them. And Yosef went out with them to accompany them on the road unto the borders of Mitzrayim, and he commanded them concerning his father and his household, to come to Mitzrayim. And he said unto them, Do not quarrel on the road, for this thing was from Yahuwah, to guard a great people from starvation. For there will yet rather be yet five years of famine in the land. And he commanded them, saying, When you come unto the land of Canaan, do not come suddenly before my father in this affair, but act in your wisdom. And Yosef ceased to command them, and he turned and went back to Mitzrayim. And the sons of Yaakov went to the land of Canaan with joy and cheerfulness to their father Yaakov. And they came unto the borders of the land. And they said to each other, What shall we do in this matter before our father? For if we come suddenly to him and tell him the matter, he will be greatly alarmed at our words and will not believe us. And they went along until they came nigh unto their houses, and they found Sarach, the daughter of Asher, going forth to meet them. And the damsel was very good and subtle, and knew how to play upon the harp. And they called unto her, and she came before them, and she kissed them. And they took her and gave unto her a harp, saying, Go now before our father, and sit before him, and strike upon the harp, and speak these words. 
And they commanded her to go to their house. And she took the harp and hastened before them. And she came and sat near Yaakov. And she played well and sang and uttered in the sweetness of her words, Yosef, my uncle, is living. And he rules throughout the land of Mitzrayim and is not dead. And she continued to repeat and utter these words. And Yaakov heard her words, and they were agreeable to him. He listened while she repeated them twice and thrice, and joy entered the heart of Yaakov at the sweetness of her words, and the Ruach Elohim was upon him. And he knew all her words to be true. And Yaakov blessed Sarach when she spoke these words before him. And he said unto her, My daughter, may death never prevail over you, for you have revived my Ruach. Only speak yet before me as you have spoken, for you have gladdened me with all your words. And she continued to sing these words, and Yaakov listened, and it pleased him, and he rejoiced, and the Ruach Elohim was upon him. While he was yet speaking with her, behold, his sons came to him with horses and chariots and royal garments and servants running before them. And Yaakov rose up to meet them and saw his sons dressed in royal garments and he saw all the treasures that Yosef had sent to them. And they said unto him, Be informed that our brother Yosef is living, and it is he who rules throughout the land of Mitzrayim, and it is he who spoke unto us, as we told you. And Yaakov heard all the words of his sons, and his heart palpitated at their words. For he could not believe them until he saw all that Yosef had given them and what he had sent him and all the signs which Yosef had spoken unto them. And they opened out before him and showed him all that Yosef had sent. They gave unto each what Yosef had sent him. And he knew that they had spoken the truth. And he rejoiced exceedingly on account of his son. And Yaakov said, It is enough for me that my son Yosef is still living. I will go and see him before I die. And his sons told him all that had befallen them. And Yaakov said, I will go down to Mitzrayim to see my son and his offspring. And Yaakov rose up and put on the garments which Yosef had sent him. And after he had washed and shaved his hair, he put upon his head the turban which Yosef had sent him. And all the people of Yaakov's house and their women put on the garments which Yosef had sent them. And they greatly rejoiced at Yosef that he was still living and that he was ruling in Mitzrayim. And all the inhabitants of Canaan heard of this thing, and they came and rejoiced much with Yaakov that he was still living. And Yaakov made a feast for them for three days, and all the kings of Canaan and nobles of the land ate and drank and rejoiced in the house of Yaakov.